We're recorded. Perfect. Thank you so much. We, so yeah, so it's very chit chatish, very casual. Um, I start with playing a song. Okay. Um, just to I don't know why this chair is so oh. I think somebody switched up chairs actually. You are mic three, right? Mic three. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I just start with like playing music to begin the show, and then we talk while the music plays slowly in the background, and I think some music works here and there. All right. The distance of the microphone is it okay? Do I need to try it slide and more? I think you're fine. Okay. I think that's fine. Yeah, because like my mic is all the way here, and yeah, people hear me clearly most of the time, and I can, ne I can never. Oh, I can never get this microphone to do what I want it to do. But yeah, yours is at least closer to your face than mine is. Like it's whatever. I just turn my face and talk. <laughs> um. Archer. So let me add you on Facebook so I can right. tag you. Are you going to the um, international Thanksgiving lunch today? Oh no, got a lot of work. <laughs> you got a lot of work. <laughs> when does your time end with um, Wilson Center? Um, when the program ends? Mm -hmm. Today. Oh, today's your last day? Yeah. Oh, look at that. It's closed tomorrow. <laughs> awesome. Next is closed. So tomorrow. you get you get the holiday off. Yeah. And just get to go to DC yeah. and chill. Yeah. for a couple of days that's yeah. nice i like dc <laughs> i usually go um to maryland the maryland dc area for thanksgiving oh but this year i'm not going because i decided i'm getting married so it's the best thing to get spend thanksgiving with my husband oh, to be here oh, <laughs> but i usually go spend it with my friends oh. um well yeah i love dc All right, I'm gonna start playing the music and switch off their music to ours. <laughs> it's 12 hours. Laying on my emotions, boy, you're driving me crazy. Set my heart in motion, the way it's my for a lady. Sugar, could you know? You're listening to the beautiful songs of music from Cameroon. 
where my guest is from today. Today, my guest is Eric Kambe, and you're listening to The International Experience. I'm your host, Tandika, and of course, every Tuesday, we are here from 12 to 1 p.m., just listening to beautiful music and chatting about all sorts of stuff. I'm very excited for today's show, um, and we're going to be chatting a little bit with Eric Kambe, who is a U.S. Department of State CSB fellow attached to the Wilson Center. Um, but in the meantime, enjoy the music that Eric brought us. I want to say a very good afternoon to my friend Shauna, who's joining us on Facebook Live. Hey, girl, thank you for watching. Good afternoon to you, Adrian. Thank you for, of course, bringing Eric to the show and, of course, joining us on Facebook Live. We see you. Eric, I have to tell you that all morning I've been listening to this playlist that you sent me and just dancing. It's such a great bit of music. Oh my. Um, and I, 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 I'm enjoying it. Like, I really am enjoying the music. It's very hype and hip and oh, just makes you bounce. <laughs> so I was listening to the music and we're going to talk a little about where you're from. You're from Cameroon. And I was listening to the music and I hear, which brings me to my first question. I heard some hints of French yes. in some of the songs. Yeah. What are some of the languages spoken in Cameroon? Oh, we have um, mainly two official languages, English and French. And that is because of our colonial history. Mm -hmm. It interests you to know that in 1884, Cameroon was colonized by Germany. But during the First World War, Germany was ousted from Cameroon by Britain and France, and then these two countries eventually took control over Cameroon. So today we are a bicultural nature, a bilingual nature, if you want to call it that way. So that's why in most of our songs and in our culture, it's always here English and French. Yeah, yeah. I love it, and I, I like the I I my French is to say in Spanish <laughs> very poquito. <laughs> <laughs> but I heard um, some words like je t'aime yeah. and you know yes, te amo you. so I recognized I was like oh so this is some French here I like yes, that yes. and it's like a mixture of English and French very beautiful music so introduce us to the country of Cameroon what is Cameroon most known for globally oh I'm start by telling you um, that my country we got our independence in the early 60s and uh, since then we've had um, two presidents uh, the what um, Kind of catches international attention is uh, football. Mm -hmm. Cameroon is widely known for great footballers like Roger Miller, and we also have um, someone you talk about so well, um, FC Barcelona. I mean soccer, I mean American football. Yeah, Europe, yeah. yeah. We so call we it are, we call it football where I'm from too. So it's okay. <laughs> You're in good company. We are, so we are known for football, but also we are a very beautiful and attractive country. We're interested to know we're blessed in a lot of natural resources, mm -hmm. a lot of. Um, Food crops and catch crops in our country, you know, and also it's a blessing our culture, you know, so much so that Cameroon is referred to as Africa in miniature because we have about 250, you know, ethnic languages with over 24 of them widely spoken in Africa. You know? mm -hmm. So we are a beautiful country and blessed in both culture and uh, mineral resources. Okay, awesome. So let's talk a little about the whole purpose of why you're here in America, in, in the United States. You are a 2019 Community Solutions um, Fellow, a part of the Community Solutions Program through the U.S. Department of State. Yeah. Um, so tell me a little about the program. How did you become a fellow? 
Yeah, so this program, it's uh, the Community Solutions Program, as we rightly say, it's a program that brings together every year approximately 70 to 80 young professionals who are creating impact in various areas. You know, it could be health, education, women and gender. So they have these thematic areas that, you know, every year they focus on. So last year um, I was selected for this program. Last year, I mean, because it's, it's, a, pro it's a program that goes in phases. You know? Okay. So uh, based on the work that I'm doing back in Cameroon, I'm into head run and operate a medical facility in Cameroon. So based on the work that I'm doing, I applied for this competitive program, the community solutions program, and I was selected for the program. So since August, I've been in the U.S. and. Fortunately, unfortunately, it will only be <laughs> up in the next couple of weeks, you know, very interesting. So that is how I became a Community Solutions Fellow. It brought together about this year, uh, 77 uh, young professionals, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, who are, as I said, creating impact in various areas. Yeah. yeah. You just told me that um, your program is, today is actually your last day with the Wilson Center, so you got a little break before you head back to Cameroon. Um, Adrian told me an interesting story that I want you to tell me All right. <laughs> about when you first got here, the day that you first got here, you ended up in a taxi somewhere. Did, can you tell me that story? Yeah. It was kind of funny story. Yeah, so like when I first got here, I was in a, in, in a hotel and then a few days later I needed to look for a place, you know, to uh, where I would be able to settle for the four months. Yeah. And then I got this through a home stay that is online and yeah. so I was supposed to move there you know, with the taxi. But <laughs> since I had never, in fact, the best way would have been using the software, but remember, I just came from Cameroon. I had a This is your first time in the US? Taxi. First time in the US. Oh my goodness. In, in New York, you know. I'm trying to figure out the subway. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. Yeah, so you can imagine. So I ended up taking the taxi and, you know, I showed the address to the driver and he like took me to another destination and I could see, <laughs> I could actually see like the destination that was like East 200, I could actually see it written on the wall like East 200, you see in the apartment it was like East 200 and I called, you know, the person in chat, I said, but I'm right in the building, you know, I said, but where are you? I can't find you, I said, why can't you find me? I'm right there, I'm in front of the building, East 200 and I could read, you know, and it was very funny. I spent a lot of time there wanting, getting to, you know, um, get things sorted out. But eventually she told me, oh, that would not be my apartment. Look at the address again. Show that address to another driver. And of course, I showed to another driver. He said, oh, no, this is, I think it was around Queens or so. <laughs> And when I was going to Brooklyn, you know, you can imagine. So <laughs> that is how I took another taxi back to Brooklyn. And of course, I got to my destination, but it took me just so much time. Yeah. Wasted, you can imagine. I always <laughs> like to hear these interesting stories about, you know, when you first come to the U.S. Because this is all a part of the culture shock, you know, like moving around, trying to figure out what East and West means and taking the subway and all of these things. I, 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 that's why I wanted to hear the story. It's all a part of the culture shock of yeah. coming as a visitor um, to a new country. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll add something there to say that, you know, in New York, you know, the subway is like the major mode of transportation. Yeah. You know, and when I came to New York, you know, I was, was like, I have to use the subway, like the train every <laughs> day. And it was like, oh my goodness, how am I going to work this out so that I don't get to use, you know, the train? Being that in Cameroon, <laughs> in 2006, I was a victim of a train derailment that killed oh. so many people. So, you know, I still have that sad Yeah, yeah, memory, yeah, I know, you know yeah. In me. And so when I came here and it was like, oh man, you need to use the subway, you yeah. need to take the train every day. Oh my oh, goodness. Oh, it was scary. But thank God for CSP, thank God for the Wilson Center, you know, they beg me up, they give me courage, you know, they say, oh, no, it's not what you think. Adrian was there to support, to help, yeah. you know, showing me how to go about, even in getting the cars, you know, the distance from where I stay to my organization is approximately about 30 minutes. It's not easy to find a place to, 30 minutes to New York. To the, yeah. To, yeah. So that was very, very good. But today, I'm, see, I'm really proud because I'm four months every day. Every day I've been using the subway, I've been to Pleasant Bay, you know, that's about... Yeah, many. that's a good way, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's a good experience and today I'm proud to say, oh, I'm no longer scared of taking a train, you know, that sad memory, yeah. you know, that train derailment is gone.
Yeah, and that's awesome. I, <laughs> thank you for sharing that story, Eric. You're welcome. It's a good way to just combat that fear and overcoming. That's awesome. Thank yeah, you. You're if you're now joining us, you're listening to the International Experience. I'm your host, Tandika, and I'm here every Tuesday from 12 to 1 p.m. And every week we feature a different guest who is international in the sense of they're either a student or they're visiting from the U.S. or they're involved in international student visiting from another country to the U.S. or they're involved in the work with international students. And today's guest is Eric Comby, who is a CSB fellow from the U.S. Department of State, and he is attached to the Wilson Center here at Pace University. Shout out to the Wilson Center. Shout out to Adrian, um, who's very helpful in, in getting Eric to come on the show today. So you talked a little about um, the work that you, you're doing back in Cameroon. Let's talk about that, particularly the work um, that you're doing with the Worldwide Medical Center. Right. Yeah, so um, the Worldwide Medical Center, I would say it's, um, it's a passion, it's a drive. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll share with you that about 20 years ago, I lost my mom. And I was a young schoolboy, you can imagine 20 years ago then, and uh, uh, it was so, so I couldn't really bear that, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, what happened with that is I grew, I grew up knowing full well that it wasn't proper for my mom to die at the age of 33. Yeah. And what I learned then when she died was that it was my own grandfather, you know, who actually killed her. You, you can imagine. So these are just some of um, the cultural beliefs, you know, that influence health outcomes. And when I got to grow up, I started asking questions and trying to provide answers on some of these uh, issues, you know, that affect health outcome. Because when she was sick, instead for her to be taken to the hospital, she was rather taken to a witch doctor, and of course, she eventually died. So at one stage in my life, when I had the opportunity to work with. Um, a research um, organization carrying mm. on some health research is on the field. It was an opportunity for me to get to know the life and death of people. So that is how I developed this drive, you know, to work for people, to work for health, and to save lives. And that's how, at one point in time, I got into creating the Worldwide Medical Center in 2017 mm -hmm. after working with a major government hospital in Cameroon, the Yaoundé Central Hospital. So I was further inspired, you know. To work for health and to open and run a hospital in Cameroon. So back in Cameroon today, what we basically do is we focus on infant and maternal health care. Mm -hmm. It's true, our main focus is uh, maternal health, but you know, you can't talk about women without talking about their children because if you want to take care of their health, at one stage in their life, they get pregnant. And so what do you get to do with your yeah. pregnancy and with the children thereafter? So that's basically the work that we do in Cameroon. And thank God in 20, um, 18, which was like our main first year of operation, we were mm -hmm. able to touch about 5,000 people directly through various outreach activities that is free consultation, free screening, primary health care was provided to members in different communities, you know, especially in the health district where my hospital is located, that is the Ebola Health District mm -hmm. in Yaoundé. And of course, we're able to treat also about 1,400 low income people who probably wow. would have died yeah. if my mom died. Today, I don't know if she died from witchcraft or she was bewitched or she died from ignorance, from poverty, from some cultural beliefs, you know, because yeah. she was taken to a witch doctor and all of that. So, basically, that is the work that I do back in Cameroon. It's based on that, that the Department of State, through the Community Solutions Program, deemed it necessary for my skills to be, you know, reinforced yeah. and in order to scale the work that I'm doing back in my country. You know? Yeah. Thank you. That's a, it, it's a great opportunity to kind of hone the skills that you have sure. um, and, and go back and apply it. We'll talk some more about what you've been doing with the Wilson Center. But if you're now joining us, you're listening to the International Experience. I'm your host, Tandika. And I'm on every Tuesday from 12 to 1 p.m. here at WPUV Radio. You can listen to us at WPUV.org. Or you can follow me on Facebook um, to watch us at Facebook Live. My name is Tandika. Stevens on Facebook and you can join me there every Tuesday to watch the show. Eric brought some beautiful music with us from the Cameroon where he's from and I want you to enjoy some music before we continue chatting. <laughs> I think, I think this is the song that had me dancing the most. Oh what my. is this song? What is he singing about? 
Okay, that's Mark Magasco. What Magasco is simply saying is like, you know, most in most cases in, in, in some developing countries or in Cameroon, like a girl will always want somebody to make it first, you know, before you get to show your love. It's mm -hmm. usually not that natural love that comes, you know, giving you a script. So they want somebody with a high social status, you know, before they get to love <laughs> the person. So if you look at if you look at the video there, you will see the guy singing Magasco, he was like a truck pusher in Cameroon, but the girl was like, Hey, hey you are not my level, you know my type. <laughs> But when he eventually made it, you know, he became rich, and so the girl was like, "Oh, I now need you," you know. So basically, that is what the song is saying: like, "Oh, please, you should be able to love, you know, despite the situation."